Zhou will appear in front of as he steps through the dry ice into the arena. Momentarily, 25 years of age from Yamagata in Japan. And he is a terrifically confident, expressive boxer. Up go the plumes of dry ice. He's just seen his compatriot and teammate in this most individual of sports. Tomoya Suboy claim championship gold and be presented with his prize. Japan sending two boxers through to a final of the world championships for the first time in history. And he has been really impressive so far. Outpointing Miguel Ferrin of Ecuador in his first contest. Then Dimitri Galigot, the 13-time national champion of Moldova, where he controlled the tempo. Then a terrific contest over the two-time national champion of Uzbekistan, Ashkuja Budinka Jayev. And then Vakid Abasov of Serbia was outpointed on a 4-1 split in a typical Southpaw Okazawa display. Well, his opponent, Amari Jones, wasn't in action yesterday in the semi-finals because he received a walkover against Lasha Garuli, the man from Georgia. And why I mention that as rather notable, because it's his second walkover of the tournament. So he hasn't been the busiest boxer, but he did line up from the round of 64, Amari Jones, and you've seen a lot of him in ring B. And he's been impressive, as so many of these fighters have been out of this young USA team. A big win against Wanderson in the quarterfinals. Wanderson may well have been the favourite, actually, in this division going, going into the competition. And he won that by unanimous decision, and he deserved to get it. It was a really mature performance from an inexperienced young fighter. And maybe a slight edge here for him because he's had that, that little bit more rest. So Mark Williams of Wales is our referee. And we are underway, 67 kilogram. Welterweight final action and the Southpaw rearing red has set out his store immediately. This is what he does. He's landed three punches already out of that Southpaw stance because of his terrific speed. And there you see him shaking his head contemptuously because the attempted response from Amari Jones wearing blue was off the mark. And this is how he goes about, goes about his work. Approaching 30 seconds gone and it has been all Okazawa so far. Turns boxing, at some, in some instances, to the sport of fencing because he scores with consistent tapping shots without reply. And if you're not scoring, despite the ring craft that a boxer may possess and despite the legend of Willie Pep, if you don't land on your opponent, it's going to be very difficult to be declared a winner of the round. There's a minute gone and so far, it's been one-way traffic in terms of landed punches. There Amari Jones did get through with a left jab. But Okazawa, the South in red, is very good at controlling the tempo. And then he wastes, or he kills the clock, having built up such a commanding lead by going beyond the distance and goading his opponent. Mugging and gesturing and embellishing, even sticking out his tongue at times. And I don't think that's a sign of disrespect. I think it's to try and get beneath the skin and into the mind of his fellow finalist, who is also in pursuit of top spot in, on the podium. We're beyond the halfway stage, and at this type of tempo, well, I think Okazawa is shaping up to be very difficult to beat, because there you see his approach in microcosm, land a single and get out of the way before the counter. So Amari Jones will be processing all of this, but two minutes of the opening round has gone as Okazawa scores with another southpaw left. And Amari Jones hasn't got to grips with the man's speed. And it's Okazawa who is controlling the distance. So that talking to from Mark Williams in the direction of Okazawa, who shakes that head once again as if to say, no, that didn't hit me. And in the meantime, he helped himself to another right jab to the body. He's a very clever boxer, is Okazawa. And he epitomizes the phrase, if it ain't broke, then don't fix it. In his second world championships here, having been edged 
in the quarterfinal against Pat McCormack in Yekaterinburg two years ago as again he sneers that gum shield in the direction of Amari Jones who faints, tries to get his way into distance, did land a good straight right to the body. But Okazawa continuing to gesture in the direction of his opponent. The 10 second clapper has sounded and look at that, no scoring punch has landed from the man in blue. That has to be around for Okazawa because he outscored his opponent considerably. Absolutely. He landed to the body on numerous occasions, which is what he does. He has his method. He trusts it. It works, and he's a difficult man to fight because you do need to be patient, but you can't be too patient. You need to try and block out the noise, which is the facial expression, all the peripheral stuff. And we look at the scores there, and he's got it on a 3-2 split, and that's huge for Omari Jones. That is massive for the American because... That's almost the best you could kind of expect in an opening round against someone like Okazawa because you've got to try and get those feet to slow down and to get two cards out of five in the opening round, that is a result. I was expecting to see that 5-0 for Okazawa because you have to try and lock onto that torso, I think. Just look at that, ignore everything else, try and land on that on the shoulder somewhere to take his balance away, and then maybe you can get a little bit tighter, a little bit closer. But he sh shaded that first round, but that's still very good for Jones. So into the second round then, and Amari Jones rested yesterday after receiving a walkover in his semi-final. He's very much in this contest. A 3-2 split in favor of Okazawa. And now the flip side is what Will that do to the approach of the man in red? Because if a, we can assume that Amari Jones is being given credit for being the aggressor. Good reverse one, two, right hand then left from Amari Jones. And so will Okazawa be able to revert to the tactic that has served him so well? Darting in with raiding singles and getting out without reply because he employed it pretty effectively in the first three minutes, but yet he has only shaded the first round on a 3-2 split. Good right hand landed to the body by Amari Jones, and Okazawa far less active in this second round. There's a good southpaw left landed from the man in red, and he celebrates it in exuberant fashion once again. Minute gone in round number two. Glancing left hand lands from Amari Jones despite the shake of the head from Okazawa competed in his home Olympic Games earlier this summer in Tokyo and was edged on a 3-2 split. And that's a big southpaw left landed by Okazawa, celebrated with a roar. But again, he's nowhere near as busy in this opening round and picked off by a backhand from Amari Jones during that trade-off. But the loss to Ok... To Iglesias in Tokyo was heartbreaking for the Japanese boxer. He just managed to ride that backhand attempted by Jones, who is doing a very good job remaining disciplined and remaining on task. Yeah, the cries of Billy Walsh saying to be quick. He's the head coach of the United States of America boxing program. Right hand to the body, not too far away from Jones who moves to his right to try and cut off the ring. Hard right hand driven into the body by Jones, but both boxers relying on singles here, which is a risky strategy, just as we were saying throughout the first round, because if your opponent lands a couple more singles than you, well, that can be a very significant factor in terms of the scorecards. Now, Amari Jones did appear to be given credit for his forward motion, Untidy trade-off where both boxes went long. Digging right hand sunk underneath by Amari Jones. Untidy tangle forcing the intervention of the referee. Okazawa was spoken to by the referee Mark Williams about that in no uncertain terms. There's a scoring right jab to the body from Okazawa. Counter left hand is a beautiful clipping shot. And then good work to the body on the change of angles from Amari Jones. The counter left came from him as well. Now that burst of activity in the final 10 seconds could well be decisive in tilting the outcome of this round in favor of the man in blue. But what say the judges? Remember the first with a 3-2 split for the Japanese boxer. Well, I thought Jones did better in the second round than he did in the first round. And the scoring in the first round gave him two cards. And the scoring in the second round there gives him four out of five. So what that means is that going into the final round, he's got a two-point lead with two judges. Okazawa has a two-point lead with one judge, and the other two cards are level at 19 apiece. So Jones needs one of them. Okazawa 
needs both. And I do think the way that first round was scored has had a real bearing on the fight because Okazawa didn't quite do what he normally does in that second round because he felt he had to change things up a little bit and hold his feet just that little bit more. But this is still very much in the balance. It could go either way. All to box for. So to the third and final round then of a contest in a 67 kilogram welterweight final that is on a knife edge. The United States with four finalists out of the boxes they sent here. Japan with two finalists for the first time in history. And Amari Jones is acquitting himself very well indeed. He takes a right jab to the body there. But again, he is remaining so composed. There's a spearing left cross to the body from Okazawa. But this, the tactic he used, wasn't rewarded overly in the first round because the man in the blue in blue adopted this posture on the front foot, taking the fight to his opponent. Okazawa far less express, far less expressive, far less active as the chess match continues between these two patient punch pickers. Minute gone in the third and final round. Both boxers fainting, trying to draw that lead that they can counter. And it was Amari Jones who pulled the trigger first and Okazawa did get through with a cluster of punches and a scoring right jab. Now he's back to his regular MO on his bike, celebrating in flamboyant fashion, scoring right jab to the body once again. Amari Jones with that right hand cocked by his peck, ready to extend it. He attempted a left hook, but it was long. And so he caught his opponent with the inside of the wrist. Okazawa spoken to about the same infringement halfway through the third and final round. A very cagey encounter in the battle for welterweight gold. Scoring right jab to the body once again. And a single before escaping to his right from Okazawa, who is doing what he does in what has been a very successful Aiba boxing career 2019. Asian champion, continental championship, silver medalist. Second appearance, having that aforementioned quarterfinal finish two years ago. Took a hard right hand to the body. Amari Jones digs in a left before the intervention of the referee. And he spent a lot of the final round operating in the manner that we so closely associate with him, Okazawa. But is that going to be enough, given how the first round was scored? A reminder of the context, entering the third and final round. Two scorecards of 20 points to 18 for Amari Jones. Two scorecards of 19 points apiece. One scorecard of 20 points to 18 in favor of Okazawa. And this round has been very similar to the first. Dissimilar to the second because Okazawa, who takes a hard right uppercut and then a left hook, which landed, but it was long. Well, what are the judges going to make of his performance here? Left jab. And then right hand, not too far away from Amari Jones. The closing bell sounds. And which way is that one going to go? And the reason we are unsure is because Okazawa did in that final round, the second half of it for sure, what he usually does. But that wasn't rewarded by the judges in the first round in the manner that it has been previously in the tournament. So no doubt that Okazawa landed scoring punches in the second half of the final round without reply, but Amari Jones kept on stalking, kept on having occasional success. Which way is this one going? Very, very difficult to say. Could Okazawa get those two drawn cards he needs? Yes, he could. I would say Amari Jones is in the box seat, given the way that's been scored in the fight so far, but that just can be a quirk sometimes. It can be what judges see from different sides of the ring. So this absolutely in the balance. If, if, I, if I had to choose a corner to be in, I would be in there with Billy Walsh. I think they're the more likely winner, but this could go red corner. It's a very tight fight, a very most, tight fight. Most certainly, and again, the scoring that has preceded this announcement. So significant, nervous moments for the boxers now as we await the decision from MC Rishi Panaka. Here's the verdict. And it's Okazawa. Say one, Okazawa sings to the canvas in celebration. A split decision, Victor.
And what a story to bounce back from the disappointment of his early elimination from his home Olympic Games in Tokyo earlier this summer. He has edged it on a 3-2 split and his modus operandi of hitting without reply has edged it by the narrowest of split decision verdicts. A sensational silver for Amari Jones of the United States of America. But it is Seiwon Okazawa who has made it two gold medals out of two for Japan in a tournament where they have sent two boxers through to the final for the first time in history. What a day for them, what a story, and what a wonderful moment in the career of Seiwon Okazawa. Extraordinary, it's so close that, it's so close. In the final round, he got two out of five cards, but he got the two that he needed, which were the two 1919s. That's how tight that was. It was 3-2 in the first round, 4-1 in the second round, 3-2 in the third round. It doesn't get any tighter than that. The two cards that Amari Jones got, he got 3-0. The three cards that he got, the man is celebrating there, and boy, does he celebrate. Hot on the sleeve. If ever there was.